In this video, we're going to continue to work on our mobile app design system. Over the course of this five hour free masterclass on YouTube that's currently on my channel, we created this design system and also this simple mobile app prototype. And in the follow up videos, we are building on and improving this design system and adding new features, components and pages. And this video is one of those follow up videos. What we're going to do today is a component that will help us deal with headlines that are too long to fit into a container, right? Let's assume that you're going to have some type of a headline that uh, is like one entire sentence. So as you can see, this would go all the way to somewhere over here, but obviously you cannot fit that into this container. At the same time, you perhaps don't want to break this into multiple lines. So then the only option you're left with is build a component like this. So what's going on here? What I'm trying to build is a component that you can reuse, right? You can basically use that for any headline of any length and any font size that will hide the remainder of the text and then automatically it's going to animate in such a way that this headline is going to pan towards the left so that you can eventually read the whole headline and then it's going to pan back to the right in a certain loop. You can encounter this feature, for example, in Spotify, but also in other apps. And it is a very good design solution that I would like to build for our design system. So again, if you're interested, if you want to save time and support the channel, definitely go and check out the link in the description that will take you to my store where you can purchase the source file for all of this. Okay, now let's get started. We're going to use our the, one of our font styles, text styles from our design system by pressing T and then typing in headline that is too long for its container, right? You can see that it automatically applied the H2 style, but we could do it with H0 or H1. That shouldn't matter, or at least that's my goal. It shouldn't matter, but why don't we start with H2? It doesn't, the starting point is not the key thing here, right? We want to put this in a container. This container is of course going to be an auto layout, right? So by pressing shift A, I added an auto layout around this headline. At the same time, this container is going to fit inside of this page container for our app, which in this case is 329 points. So let me just do that. Let me actually set this to fixed. And that's the auto layout, not the text, right? The text is going to be hug always. So this auto layout is now is going to be I forgot the number again, 329. Okay, so 329, right? And also it's going to be aligned to the left. So this auto layout setup, let's select align left. No padding, okay? No padding, perfect. Now we could simply take this, turn this into a component and do two states where one state would be this and the other one would be this and we could call it a day. But I wanna make this look really nice. I wanna essentially, let me just quickly show you what I have in mind. I wanna go for a fade out like this. I mean, that is way cooler than just simply cutting it all of a sudden, right? I think that's way better, but this is going to be a bit complicated. So let me show you what approach I think could work. We need to create a mask. We need to create a mask, right? This mask is going to be inside of this frame. So let me paste that in, but it's going to be absolute position. Let me just align that to the top and left. And also it's going to be the same size initially, right? Let me just also rename this to mask. Uh, and this mask is going to determine what parts of the text are visible, right? But again, it's not going to be that simple because we want to create a mask that will expand beyond the main auto layout. I hope you're still with me, but what I'm going to do is, first of all, let me sel select the mask 
and then do in the constraints area I'm gonna set that to left and right and then top and bottom which is going to ensure that when we scale the auto layout this is going to scale alongside with that okay perfect I'm gonna just rename this auto layout the main one headline fade out animation let's say and I am going to create a rectangle that is going to be white, but it's going to be a gradient. And the gradient is gonna go from left to right, or from right to left, basically horizontally, right? That's the point. And it is going to be from fully visible to fully transparent, okay? I am going to rename this to fade out left, and then duplicate it, flip it, shift H, and rename this to fade out right. Okay, now I'm gonna take fade out left, command X and select the mask and then command V, all right? Align to the left, make it the same height as this mask and then just move that beyond the frame, right? At the same time, we're gonna disable clip content on the mask so you can now see the fade out even though it is beyond the edges of the it reaches beyond the edges of the of its container same for right again mask paste in adjust the height and also position it so that the left edge of the fade out is touching the right edge of its container okay additionally constraints right is gonna be the first one so it's aligned to the right and then it's gonna go top and bottom on the vertical one for the left one that's gonna be left and then top and bottom again why are we doing this when i change the size of the headline fade out animation the whole uh, component or soon to be component we are going to ensure that these fade outs are anchored to these edges left and right but at the same time it's gonna adjust depending on the height of the mask okay let me revert those changes perfect now let's do one thing let's actually take the mask and turn it into a mask so i'm selecting the mask layer which contains these fade outs that we've prepared and then i'm going to select use as mask right but you can see that nothing happened essentially I think we need to position that above these elements and now look what happened. Isn't that interesting? So what's happening here, you can see that there is a fade out, right? It's kind of the, the headline is now disappearing into nothing. If I change the alignment of this parent element, you can see that now it's fading out from the left. That is because these fade outs go beyond the edges or start beyond the edges of the main container, right? I know it's complicated and abstract, but uh, as you can see, it's working. So no problem there so far. Hopefully this is gonna work even, even further. Now let's match the width of this, of this fade out to be the same as the width of this padding right here, which is 32. So that's very simple. Instead of these, fade outs being 47, they're gonna be uh, 32. So let me just do this. And now they're 32, great. And the same on the left, that's also gonna be 32, right? Now, and what's great about this is that when I actually change the size of this headline, you can see that the size, the height of this auto light is gonna adjust because it's set to hug. And if it isn't adjusting for you, just select hug on the main container and then the mask is also being adjusted in height because it's simply set to top and bottom and it's a kind of adjusting to the height of its parent and the parent is now adjusting its height to the text so it's like a cascading logic of uh, font size changes i am going to now go for H2 again, right? And I am going to actually turn this into a component. This component is gonna have two states. So let me just add another state. And this state is going to be called, first of all, let me rename this to state. This state is gonna be called like start and the second one is gonna call, be called end. 
because that's where the text is going to end. And I am going to now select the second variant and change the alignment of the auto layout to right. Okay, next thing is selecting both of these headlines, right, in both of these states. And we are going to be creating a text property. Click create text property and create property. This is going to ensure that when we use an instance of this and then just add something new, that this is still going to work, but with our updated headline. We could also change the font size, but still this is going to work. This is just going to be an override of the main component, but this is still the same component, right? Even though it looks as if this is uh, something completely different, it's not. It's the same thing, but uh, with utilize, utilizing overrides in a smart way. So that's done. And now we actually need to create the animation. So with the first state selected, let me go to prototype and then connect that to the second one. And I'm going to do after the delay, which is going to be like one millisecond, change to start state and it's going to be smart animate. And this is going to take quite a while. This is going to take like, I don't know, like four seconds. Okay, this is going to be very slow because you essentially want to be, enable the user to read through this, right? Same goes for this state. After delay, let's say also 4,000 milliseconds, it's going to change the state smart animate in 4,000 milliseconds as well, all right? And now let me use an instance of this design and let me use this. First of all, let me change the color of the headline so that we know that this is an animated component and not a headline on the page. But let me just add this to our animated components section, right? Right below the updating live animated component we have created in the previous video. And let me launch the prototype. Let me navigate to design system. Let's see what it does. Okay. So you can see it, it kind of goes back and forth, but you can see that at the beginning, there is no pause. So we need to fix that. Definitely. Let's fix that. Let's add after delay on the first interaction as well. So let me select this interaction also 4,000 milliseconds. So there's going to be a four second break, then a four second change and four second break again. Let me actually relaunch the prototype again. Design system, headline that is too long for its container. And now, fortunately, we have created a component that's taking care of that. So it, we kind of see the whole story. And now it goes back. And you can see we have a nice fade out that is just beyond the edges. And that's, that's brilliant. Now, the best thing about this, <laughs> as usual, the best thing about this is this, watch this. I'm going to uh, duplicate this. I'm going to select this thing. I'm going to set that to body to, and I'm just going to add very, 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 very long headline. Too long almost. And now if I go back to the prototype, I need to reset this. can see that even though it's the same component, we have completely different headline, completely different text, but still the interaction is intact and still this is happening, right? So this is it's very useful. You can also change the color of this to just you the usual black color. Oops, you can see that we've got an insane override. Let me just reset this, okay. Always when something weird is happening in your prototypes, don't forget to reset or relaunch the prototype. Now this looks good. I think this works great. What's great about this is you can also use this on multiple widths. So we could theoretically, let me duplicate this again. We could do half the page, right? Let me re relaunch the prototype.
and now it works. Okay, so at this point, all the interactions, all interactions, animations take the same amount of time, but we could also overwrite that. All right, so if we go to, if we go to design and we go for this one, we could change the first to take 8,000 milliseconds. And then when we change the state to end, we could also change the duration again, right? We need to access, sorry, that's 8,000. We need to access the second interaction by switching the states, right? Now let me reset this again. And this animation should take longer. Can you see that? It takes a longer time. So although this is, all of this is one component, all of this is just one component, you can fully customize it and make sure that it fits your needs precisely. That's the beautiful thing about components. If you utilize overriding in a smart way, you can then achieve really flexible results. And of course, if you're not happy with four seconds, you can make it faster, slower, whatever, that's just up to you. But this component, this animated component is ready for your use. So if you wanna, again, save time, support the channel, it's not working for you, go and check out the link in the description to purchase the source file, including what we have just created and including what we have created in previous videos and also in the main masterclass. Perfect. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, I would appreciate you leaving a like. Thanks for tuning in and I will see you in the next one, maybe adding another feature or another component to our mobile app design system. Thank you. See you in the next one.